Operations management is basically about managing something we call the transformation process. The transformation process is quite simply how we turn what we receive as supplies to a company into what we see as outputs from a company or organisation. The transformation process exists within an environment and it's about managing this process as the key element of operations. So what we need to get is we take what we call transformed resources, the things that are going to be changed, and we use the materials and the information, the customers, and we bring these things together with the transformed resources. On the other side, we have our own facilities and staff, the people who will work on the resources, and then we have what we call the transforming resources, for instance, machinery or computers, mechanics, anything like that, the, part, the actual physical items we use to take the materials, the information, the customers and combine them and produce the output. We put these through a transformation process. This transformation process can be building something, it can be manufacturing, but it can also be changing people. It can be changing tired people arrive at a hotel into refreshed people who get up in the hotel. If we're changing people who arrive at Heathrow Airport into people who leave Los Angeles Airport. These are all what we call transformation processes. And of course, the output of all transformation process is the goods and services that we're hoping that people either buy or in some other way, if we are not a commercial operation, take from us and want from us. So what are the inputs to the process? Well, the inputs to the process are basically the resources that we treat, transform or convert. These are a mixture of things. They're a mixture of materials, like I said, this could be oil, it could be plastics, it could be electronics, it could be any sort of thing that's used that is hard and tangible and can be touched. But it also involves the information. For instance, a car needs to be designed. A building needs to be have an architect to put forward plans where it can be done. It is this sort of information, but it's also information about what customers want. Information that come from marketing saying that customers want a certain style or a certain colour. And because this is the customers themselves are part of this process, the customers need to bring in and they are the ones who are transformed, who hopefully will leave either happily with a good or having been changed or having received a service that they found satisfying. And of course, we also have transforming resources. These are the things that act upon the other free resources and change them. There are two types of resources. There are facilities, machinery, etc., buildings, equipment. It can be something that actually physically changes. So it could be facilities such as a hotel room, a bedroom, a bar, drink, food, etc. There are huge numbers of different types of facilities. And of course, staff. Staff that might be seen directly working with customers or other staff who help in the operation of any successful enterprise, whether that enterprise be public or private sector. So what happens within the process itself? Well, to a certain extent, we treat the process as a black box. We may be unsure of exactly what happens within it. But effectively, what we know happens is that materials are changed. They might be changed in physical property, i.e. we maybe burn petrol or consume materials. They might be changed in location. We may pick something up from one place and move it to another, either within the factory or across the country, across the world. They may be changed in possession. It's possible that materials that are processed will actually they be passed over to someone else. Or they may be changed in condition. So, for instance, a bed will be in a hotel will go from being clean and ready for customer's use to needing to be cleaned and prepared for the next customer's use. Or it could well be materials that are stored, for instance, warehousing, etc. Or information can be stored, or money can be stored within a bank. Information, of course, is also used as part of their primary inputs. And this can be information about, for instance, an air traffic control controlling planes or a map giving directions. It could be the location of where we move from A to B. We don't know where we put it or in a giant warehouse. Amazon needs to know where hundreds of thousands 
of different items or locations they can pick them and deliver them to the and the customer the customer can be changed physically maybe they have a haircut maybe they have a medical operation maybe they have a bath maybe they get to rest their physiological state may change they may no longer be tired the psychological state they may be happy they may be relaxed they may be placed into a better area or they could be stored we store customers in a meaningful way in operations if we put them up in a hotel or if we lock them in a prison not all customers may be willing customers and what comes out from the process we can differentiate these between products and service based organization between tangibility of products and intangibility of services. You can touch a product, a service you cannot touch perhaps. It is only the way that it changes that you can note it ever existed. Most operations actually produce these days a mixture of products and services. We have a separate video on the operations outputs mix. Take a look at that after this and that'll give you some a clear diagramic approach to how this has changed. And these days, of course, a lot of service and products are merging. All operations provide some sort of service, but it may also be the case they produce a product as a means of serving customers. The old argument is, do we sell some electric deal or do we sell someone a hole, but we provide them with equipment so they can make their own hole rather than go around and making the hole for them? A quite simplistic approach. It may start you to realise that even drills are, and other such machinery may well themselves be seen to actually be provisions of services. But service customers are more and more involved in serving themselves. Anyone who's been to a unwanted item in the bagging area experience at Tesco's know the advantages and disadvantages of customer self-service. Bringing customers is a part of the operation.